y'all. I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and I do look a hot mess. I haven't showered today because I'm about to show you the state of my craft room. I started doing a de-stash, a declutter. I have that video. Um, it was an exclusive video for my Patreon members. So if you want to see that, make sure you head over there. Um, but today starts the putting things back. So I have been watching the home edit like crazy. I've been organizing my whole house. Things are looking great. The craft room is kind of like the last frontier. My craft room was already really organized, but I thought there were some things that I could edit out. And there were certainly some things that I could um, contain in a better way. So that is what I'm going to work on today. I'm going to show you some of my um, new containers that I purchased from Walmart and Target. And I'm excited to get started. So I will link everything down below. If you have any questions about products or whatever, make sure to leave them um, down below and I'll find those products for you. Otherwise, let's go. All right, so I went to my Walmart and bought the new line of home edit containers, which are these clear acrylic containers. Something that I have learned from watching the show is that before you start to fill the containers, before you start to organize, you need to see what is going to fit in the space comfortably. And that's what I'm doing with these clear containers. I moved some baskets up top. That top shelf, not easily reachable. So certainly things that I'm not going to reach for very often. So I had these baskets already in my stash. These are some old yearbooks and things, some keepsakes that will work out well there. Now I'm going to start working on the clear acrylic containers. So I'm seeing what fits. It was a lot of trial and error. It was a matter of thinking about what I might want in the space and what I might want to be able to access and see. Previously, this is my filming area. Previously in the shelves above my filming area, I had a lot of closed storage, meaning that I couldn't really see what was in there. And so I didn't reach for it at all. I rarely took things out of there. Um, and this is a place I spend most of my time filming. So having these clear containers made it easier to remind myself of what I had. I've already gone through the edit process. So the things that you're seeing are the things that I'm keeping. I had three trash bags full of actual things to throw away. I have a huge donation pile. And then I have a de-stash pile of things that I'll be giving to friends and to Patreon members as well. So I'm just experimenting with what works and you'll see me kind of moving things around. I'm keeping like items together. For instance, this is all my organization material, my label maker, the um, pockets I use for stamps, the little bags I use in different areas. So I, I try to keep things together as much as possible. And I try to consider what I need to have out. Here are some gouache paints. Now I use these. I keep them in the big box because I feel like that's the easiest way to organize them. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if I can get some more pieces in there. Not yet. I think I'll leave part of that open. And here is another bin that goes up high. These are bags. I feel like I'm probably a crazy bag lady because you guys, this is me after I had already de-stashed several of my bags. So just fun pencil bags and organization bags and things like that that I use on the regular. And here is something I'm excited about, but man, did this take a while. I have a ton of tissue paper and a ton of napkins and I use them frequently, or at least I used to when I was art journaling, but they have been crunched up in a cart where I couldn't really pull the cart out easily. So I couldn't access them. So having them in this clear bin that I can reach and pull down easily is going to be so helpful, but I do have to fold them so they fit fit. If I cram them in, if I didn't have them folded right and they were like crammed in and didn't look nice, then I don't think I would be very tempted to grab for those. So this is my way of going through. You can see I'm kind of de-stashing some of the napkins as I go that I don't think I'll be using. I'm going through folding them so they fit nicely in this bin so that when I pull down the bin, I'll be inspired. It won't just look like a hot mess of tissue paper. I am trying to organize it loosely in rainbow because of course I've been watching the home edit and that's what they do all the time. And that's something I had already embraced in my craft space. I think when our supplies are organized in a really visually pleasing way, it just inspires us to use them more. There's a reason we bought the supplies. We loved what they look like. I've had people tell me that my craft room kind of looks like a craft uh, shop or like a hobby shop. And I think that's an awesome compliment because it makes me, it makes me excited to go in there. 
I did have organization units in my drawers previously, but I'm switching them out for these home edit clear containers for the most part. I bought two of the packs. I think there's eight pieces in each pack, maybe 10 pieces. And I bought two of them. They were $25 each, which is not too bad. And I really feel like it gives me more flexibility. I was just using some odds and ends containers that had come from different parts of the house. And while containing in those worked, I feel like these fit together better. I like some of the smaller containers. You can see I'm just kind of experimenting to see what's going to work best where. And again, trial and error process. I, I like how the drawers are set up in that this top drawer is stamping and embossing, but truthfully, I don't have a ton of embossing powder, so I don't need a lot of room in there for that. I can limit it. I can divide up my embossing powders. You can see it's, it was a little bit of a challenge to feel how it was going to work the best. I like that all my clear acrylic stamp blocks are in there. And what I really like about these pieces in a craft room, these home edit ones, are that you can take these little trays, these little bins out to where you're going to be working. So I can gather things for a project and then have those little bins out and accessible and then I can put them back if that makes sense. So I'm keeping all those like things together and it was also good. I don't know when the last time I've completely emptied these drawers was, but it, they were dirty in there. So it was good to be able to wipe those out somewhat. This one was another one I struggled with a little bit. So I have a lot of different watercolors. You're going to see me kind of trying to figure out what's going to go where, what's going to fit with this style of drawers. These are from Ikea. I'm seeing what'll fit. Here's my Neo colors. They were in little containers, but they were in two separate containers, which I found really annoying as I was pulling them out to work. So I think having them all in open storage right here in the bins helps. I like open storage because I don't like having to take the lid off when I want to work with a particular supply. This felt a little bit like Tetris, trying to figure out what configuration was going to work the best and which one made the most sense. This one in particular did not make a lot of sense because you can't really get to the things in the back. I'm trying to get my gelatos to stand up right, but they won't. I would need more and I just don't have very many more. So I'm trying to experiment. That seems to be working. It leaves me with this space on the edge where I can put the long paintbrushes that I use and then I don't need that big paintbrush holder after all. This third drawer was for current projects. I'm not quite ready to deal with that one. Here we have paint and mixed media. This is just some extra paint supplies. You know, I could always move these to the other clear acrylic bin that I have out in my filming area, but this is where I'm starting. These are just some, some mixed media things that I don't use very often, including some extra ink, some colored paints and things like that. So we're just seeing how everything can kind of fit. I'm not reinventing the wheel. Cause like I said, I already had categories going. I already had things sorted. I'm just trying to come up with a, a system that's going to work a little bit better for me. The one drawer that was giving me a ton of problems is the bottom drawer that you're going to see here in a minute. Um, first of all, let me move my, uh, my alcohol inks. Look at this bottom drawer. There's, it's like the tool drawer and things just were not sticking very, like it was, everything was just crammed in there. So I'm going to clean that out. I'm going to organize a little bit based on how I use it, which means I'm, I don't use some of these punches very often. I can fit them all in here, I can adjust this, but it can go to the back because I, I don't use those very often at all. I use this punch, my grommet, and I use my We Are Memory Keepers punch. We can keep those together. It, it just makes sense to organize by the way that you craft. So if you don't need certain things, then put them farther back because it won't, it won't matter. You'll get them when you need them. And these are punches. I don't have a ton, but I don't need to throw them away. I'm just trying to figure out what's going to work best for how I like to organize. Just trying to figure out how I can fit another bin. I have these two little white bins. Those will be perfect. Spreading out a little bit more, some of the spacing, cleaning those out, and it's easier to grab things. And you can see now they're kind of color coded, which is also very nice. I did decide to keep these teal bins for my current projects. Um, these are for creative team projects and things like that, that I'm working on. And it just works out better to have those. I like pulling them out again, things that I can pull out of the drawers helps a lot. All right, here is the little side cabinet for this desk. And I rarely open this. I'll be totally honest. I don't use this side cabinet a lot and I would like to use it more because it's really 
prime real estate in my craft room. It's sitting right next to where I craft. So I'm adjusting some of the shelves to fit the clear um, containers I picked up from Target. So these are actually refrigerator containers. And the reason they work really well here is unlike the other ones where there's like a handle cut out, these have a little lip to them, to the front of them. So it makes it easy to pull them out. So they work really well in this sliding rotation. I had bought um, a few sizes, one that was one larger one and then two kind of skinnier ones. I end up going to Target midway just to, um, just to grab a few more because once I knew what I liked, I just bought some samples to see what would fit in the space. And once I knew what I liked, then I um, went back and got some more. So first of all, I'm relocating my stickers. I divided them into two, actually three. I have one bin that is all dimensional stickers. I have one bin that is sticker sheets. And then I have one large bin that is miscellaneous sticker books. Of course, I have a ton of Happy Planner sticker books. Those are separate. These are just miscellaneous sticker books, whether they're planning books or from certain scrapbook lines. All these sticker books are in one container. They are no longer in a drawer. They're in a clear container that I can see and pull out and use really easily. I'm super excited about this storage solution so I can grab for them and have them on my desk more often. See, look at all those sticker books that are just like begging to be used. I'm so excited that they are gonna be easy for me to access and see. They were in one of the drawers that you see right at the top of that screen and it was just hard to see them all. I am still going to keep my alpha stickers in these drawers, but now because there's not a bunch of extra stickers crammed in, I can pull them out a little bit more easily. This is where I'm noticing I need some more of those clear containers. I have all these six by eight albums. I need to go to Target and get some extra pieces and then I will be back to do a little bit more organizing. All right, before I finish my desk, I'm taking my attention over to this little sewing cart. This is where my sewing machine sits. It also holds all my dies and it had become kind of like a big junk drawer. All of my sewing stuff was just crammed in one tiny little bag that would no longer close. So it was spilling out all over the cart. I had just a lot of like miscellaneous, I don't know, little trinkets and, and things like that that really didn't go in there. The dust over here was crazy. So I'm going through cleaning out a bunch of stuff that I no longer need, saving the things that I do want to keep and getting it all organized in a new divided basket. All right, here's the view of my desk area in this final stretch. I went to Target, you can see the bags, got a couple new bins that will go in that desk area. Again, it was those refrigerator bins with that lip that was easy to pull out, which I really, really like. So I'm just taking the stickers off again, putting the product in place first, making sure it fits and seeing how that's gonna work. And then I'm going to start putting things away and clearing things out of the room. So moving sprays that I had in a different location, let's move those and have them all in the same place. Let's clear out some things that aren't working. So one would be this drawer. It's kind of my catch-all drawer. I'm gonna clean it out just like the others. And we're gonna add some clear bins in here that will work a little bit better, keep things a little bit more organized. And plus it had just become kind of a junk drawer. I'm gonna keep that separate drawer mostly just for things that are kind of non-craft related. Um, and then move the crafty things that were in that drawer to where I can see them on my spinning tower, which had been mostly empty before. So this is gonna be where I keep my headphones and my lotion and chapstick, things like that, that I use in my craft room. All right, time to move paper. All my six by eight paper will go into one of these bins. Again, easy to pull out, which makes it easier for me to grab and use. I will actually end up having a bin that starts out as empty. It's going to be where my mailing supplies go, but here I'm able to put all of my blenders and all of my wax um, seals. And in this one, I'm getting rid of my purple, or my purple, my rainbow box that I had on my desk for a long time. It was a wooden box. The drawers just didn't work very well. And so I emptied all the things in there. And once again, it was closed up storage that I couldn't see through. And so I rarely grabbed for things that were in that rainbow box. For me, clear storage is always the way to go if I want to use items. If I'm purposely wanting to hide items like the 
white bins I use for all of my flat lay items, my props and things. I don't need to see those all the time. So those go in, I don't go in bins that I can't see through. It's a really important distinction for me. And it's something that you need to think through how you like to work. If you don't see it, are you going to still use it? And if not, then maybe you need to consider clear bins like I have. All right, so I currently keep completed projects on a shelf that is outside my craft room. And this is gonna sound controversial, but I don't keep everything I make. I don't keep every scrapbook. I don't keep every faith-based project that I create. If I did, my house would be quickly overrun. And I love having pieces to pass down to my kids. I love having pieces to look through, but I'm not a fan of keeping absolutely everything. I decided that what I needed was to contain my projects in a different way. They were all on the shelf, but you could see them all and it was crammed full. So these containers are helping me sort my different types of projects and to see what I actually have. And you can see there's going to be a growing pile next to me of ones that I am discarding. And it doesn't mean I didn't love making the project. It doesn't mean that it wasn't a special project to me, but it just means that it's time for me to let certain ones go. I am dividing them into four different categories. I have a ton of traveler's notebooks. Those are going in the smaller bins in the back. I have two bins that are for faith-based projects, which would be Bible journaling and things that I've worked through in the past. And then I have an art journal bin and a planner bin. I know it probably seems crazy to some of you that I wouldn't try to keep everything. And I just don't think it's very practical to keep everything you've ever created. I don't think that my kids will enjoy sifting through all of that. I do think that they would like to have these bins in the future. So as I create more, I'll have to continue to go through these bins, decide what I want to keep, decide what I want to discard, and um, just kind of limit myself. I think it's so easy for us to get overrun by those projects and um, let it just get out of hand. So in this way, I'm containing them. The other ones I will just say goodbye to, but look how nice that looks on the shelf. They're all labeled, they're all contained, and I'm able to keep things um, in, in perspective there. So this was literally like overflowing, things were falling on the floor. Otherwise, I really am so excited about this kind of new home edit style organization. Of course, I've always been a fan of clear containers. It has really helped that I can see more of my supplies. The more I see, the more I use. I discarded things that weren't working for me. I discarded old organization systems that were no longer working for me. It's okay if those things change. Labeling has been huge. Being able to access and move my supplies around was really important for me. Just taking the time to go through, edit out things that I wasn't that I wasn't planning on using, um, and keeping only the things that I knew I'd be using um, has really made a huge difference. I feel like there are so many great options out there. I love the home edit line at Walmart. It feels really affordable. It feels like a good quality um, and they're really versatile as far as the sizing, easy to use in a craft room. The Bright Room collection at Target is also one that I reach for and use frequently in my craft room. And I think that there's lots of options out there. It doesn't have to be really expensive, but get something that's going to work for you. Don't just opt for the cheapest thing out there. Um, if, cause if the system doesn't work for you, then in the end, it's going to be wasted money. All right, I hope you enjoyed it coming along with me to reorganize my room, to try a few new systems, to get everything in order and all freshened up. It always makes me feel good to work on my space. This is the last space in the house. I still have to do our garage, but it's been a really productive three to four weeks that I've been working and the craft room feels lighter. It feels even happier. It feels ready to create. 
As always, I will link things down below in case you want to check out any of the products I use. If I forget any of them, make sure to just leave a comment and I will search them out for you. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Again, the part one of this video was for Patreon members only. So if you're interested in checking out the whole de-stash process, then make sure to check the link for Patreon in the description box below. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative.